Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. I uh, hope the lighting's okay. It's a little dark in here today. Uh, this is Lou's engine. It is on a stand. It's his M38. Okay, uh, I'm not starting this up on 24 volt. I've got a civilian carburetor on here, regular spark plugs, regular wires. And I always start them up with some Petronics. So I got the Petronics in this dis brand new distributor. I uh, used only for startups and the um, the coil. Uh, I got the flywheel on the resurfacing machine. It needs some help. Um, clutch that was on here looks okay. Uh, this is um, I've got the exhaust on it. This is getting ready to be fired up. Uh, <clears throat> I think you can see this filter here. Uh, this is a filter that you'll find on some M38s. Uh, very popular on aircraft and stuff. And um, you loosen the nut, you turn the handle, and the discs in there, all the junk comes out of the discs, it goes in there, and then you can drain it. Um, so you do this every thousand miles or so. Uh, give it a couple turns clockwise. And it is a very good filtering system, but um, uh, this one, I'll show you what one looks like, but th this one is no good. This one was doing absolutely nothing. And I don't know how long it's been like that on the last motor, but we're not going to put this uh, junk part in a new motor. So I'm waiting. I do have another one of these on order. Uh, I did find one, and uh, hopefully it'll be here in a day or two. And then we'll get this motor started up. Let's take this guy over to the bench show you what one should look like okay guys here's what Lou's filter looks like and this is what it should look like uh, this is called a uh, this is made by the Kuno Corporation uh, C-U-N-O uh, right here in Meriden Connecticut so like I say they're popular on aircraft now all his um, little discs of metal broke off from that stump there. So they're supposed to be uh, there's alternating discs. Some go out here and some are in here. And then if I can show you that when you turn it, I don't know if you can see it, but all the junk will fall off into the canister and um, and then you could drain the canister and like I say very high quality stuff and uh, it's on some M38s they use this for a little bit and uh, it's a good piece to have if you have it um, but just make sure it doesn't look like Lou's did so you know pull out pull out this top here you know every every year you'd probably take the top off clean the clean the little barrel out there um, so you got to keep an eye on this and make sure it doesn't go to hell like this one did on Lou's. This was doing absolutely nothing. No filtering was happening. And we're not going to let that happen to the new engine. Now this one belongs to somebody else. And like I say, Lou, I do have another one on order for you. And we'll get you uh, fixed up and running in no time. And uh, while we're on the subject of M38s, we are going to talk a little bit about the evolution of the valves and the rotators and we'll get into that next let me uh, see how the lighting is and see if I get some better lighting on these hang in there okay guys a lot of stuff going on with the M38s during the the history of their engines and stuff uh, there was only like 60,000 of those guys made but they did a lot of engine um, upgrades or however you want to call it now this is this is a standard exhaust valve uh, in an L head engine here's a retainer that's a new old stock retainer and that's what your keys look like you got big thick keys there okay so that would go on you would get a key on that side and that side oops hang in there and then your spring would be on there and that's how that guy worked Okay, just sat in there and that went up and down okay 
uh, they thought there was a need for the exhaust valve to rotate. So the next thing they did, let's get in on this guy. Next thing they did, as far as I can tell, somewhere in 52 this started happening. <clears throat> the valve end is different. Hope you can see that okay. Uh, the retainer is different. They put a little cap on there, like that. And that's what that was their first attempt at getting the exhaust valve to rotate. And with the cap on there, you need these very, very thin keepers. Okay, so sometimes this stuff can be tricky to find. The caps, uh, the valves are kind of available, and um, like I guess say these caps could sometimes be a bear to find. And like I guess say these, they do have a different shape than the other ones, and it's necessary with the cap and the retainers. Okay, now that was 52 that started happening. And I don't know how long it went for. Uh, I do a lot of M38 engines. It's amazing how many M38 engines I do compared to how many were made. Okay, now. On late, late M38s and on Bertram's, I, I got Bertram's in here and that's a R MC prefix on his engine number and that's a, a remanufactured engine basically that went in M38 <clears throat> they used a standard this is where the F head exhaust rotator came from right here they first used it on late M38 uh, engines <clears throat> they used a valve with a complete different kind of keeper this is again the F head style with these very thin and different shaped keepers and this was the final attempt uh, at M38 exhaust valve rotating okay now the thing with Bertram's engine is see that's how everything would fit in there the thing with Bertram uh, his engine the RMC prefix is both the intake and the exhaust had rotators on them. So uh, intake valves and exhaust valves, rotators, different keepers, different valves. So that's the kind of stuff, you know, you open up an M38 engine and you're like, oh geez, what do I have here? Uh, so it can be valve number one, standard L head, mid-range right there where everything's different the valve the cap the thin keepers the retainer and then you get this guy and which uh, that kind of walked right into the F head exhaust setup and this is a, like I say standard F head stuff here and the keepers are here the valves can be tricky to find uh, in the proper size but uh, We'll go over more uh, of that stuff when I get uh, building Bertram's engine. So, uh, in just a short period of time, they had a lot of different ideas. And uh, this is the kind of information, you, you know, I know it's hard to find. You don't, you don't see this kind of information out there, but I'm putting it out there for when you guys are opening up your M38 engines. When you see stuff like that, don't worry about it. It was originally done, and at some point they were doing a lot of modifications trying to refine that L head to be the best engine it could be so just some valve information for you and how they got them to rotate okay guys back over at Lou's engine uh, I get a lot of questions about what I use when I start up my engines uh, first thing I do is when I pressure lube the engine I use a break-in oil it's a, a straight 30 weight break-in oil uh, it's high in zinc. Everything when I assemble this has assembly lube everywhere. It has cam lube where it needs cam lube. It has extreme pressure lube where it needs that. 
uh, I always start with this is my my startup distributor okay and it has a Petronics setup in it we have the Petronics coil we want the best possible startup we can have uh, points and condensers uh, have failed me in the past and I don't need any of that on a fresh startup okay I have a rebuilt carburetor this has started numerous numerous engines it's dialed in perfectly and sometimes it just needs a little tweak uh, but I know I'm not gonna be leaned out I know I'm not gonna be you know burning holes and pistons or anything from a lean condition uh, it's a known carburetor I use a known carburetor after 30 minutes of runtime on that break-in oil uh, I drain the oil usually change the filter on this one uh, again here's that piece that that goes to somebody else we just turn that a few times and we'll drain the, the barrel there and then we'll fire it up on shell rotella uh, 1540 diesel oil and that's what I run in these engines uh, you know from the time they're brand new until whenever so uh, that's what I use. The only other thing that can get you in trouble is the fuel pump. There's a lot of garbage fuel pumps out there. Uh, some of them putting out way too much pressure. You'll notice if you have one of them, your, your carburetor will be pissing fuel. Um, you don't want too much fuel. You don't want too much fuel pressure. You don't want too little fuel. You don't want to be lean when you're starting a fresh engine. And uh, we're going to go over here and take a look at the only fuel pump that I will use and here it is like I say there are a lot of fuel pumps out there everybody's making one there's a lot of garbage out there this is the only one I use the pressure on these I um, I've, uh, these have been on just about every one of my engines the pressure is always perfect and uh, this is the only one that I can confidently put on an engine and not have any trouble with now everybody says uh, well, where can you get it? So before we do that, let's take a look. This is, oh, here's the box, hang on. Made by Seal Tested. And like I say, it's if you want a good fuel pump, this is it. You can get them from uh, Pete DeBella. Uh, he is the only guy that brings these in and sells them. They are perfect, and let's get Pete's information there. Uh, I buy these, you know, I do so many engines, I, I always have these in stock. Uh, Pete does have them in stock right now. He did get another shipment in recently. There's his phone number. Uh, give Pete a call, tell him that you watched my video and I told you about it, and he will get you set up with the best possible fuel pump that you can have. If you're having any fuel issues, if you're having any fuel pump issues, uh, don't let a, a crappy fuel pump bite you in the ass. So if you want a good one, like I say, this is the only one that you'll see on my engines. And, you know, I hope that means something to you guys. Uh, I've tried just about everything out there. I've been disappointed with everything. This is the only one I will use, and I know you'll be happy with it. So, um... Lou, we're getting there. Like I say, I was—I uh, just got to get that. Um, I just got to get that uh, oil filter straightened out. I got a fan on you. The belts are on. The exhaust is on. I'm gonna put a radiator here. Get some hoses hooked up, and hopefully, be this week. Uh, we'll be making smoke on this guy pretty soon. So, as uh, soon as that filter gets here, this guy is just about ready to go. We'll get it fired up and I'll show you the uh, the run in, the oil pressure, the temperature, and uh, the break in of this engine. So that's all I have for you today, guys. Um, I don't think there's probably a whole bunch of people interested in the M38 valve evolution. But if you are, I hope this video helped you. And uh, uh, that's what we got for you today. So catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.